In this video, we're going to go over the settings in Gauge List. To start, make our way to this cog icon. And then the first one we're going to look at is the manufacturer settings. This one's pretty simple. We have a list of common manufacturers in Gauge List listed here. If you don't need any, you can delete them all. Or you can choose individual ones that you'd like to delete. Hit that X button to do that. If you want to add one, you come over here and hit the add button and add their information. Below that, we have custom fields. Custom fields are really handy because they can really allow us to customize gauge list to how we want. Keep in mind, this feature is only available on our starter plus plans and up. If we go to the top right here, we can click add. And here we can choose the name of our custom field. Below that, we can choose the record type, the gauge record, the calibration record, or both. Keep in mind, this can't be changed once it's created. So if you're ever unsure, I always recommend going with both because you can make it inactive on the record that you don't want it on. So that way you keep things open-ended. You can choose the type of field that you want to create. Text field allows you to enter just regular text. Multi-line allows you to enter multiple lines of text. The number field allows you to enter numerical values. The integer field allows you to enter whole numbers. And then checkbox, drop down, and radio buttons allow you to make your own value selections. We could enter different values to select from here, and we'd enter each new value on a new line. A checkbox selection is going to allow us to select multiple values at one time. A drop down list is going to look just like what we're looking at here. The field name will be on the left, and then our values are going to drop down right here in this list. Radio buttons are going to look just like this. It's going to be our field label, and then we're going to have our radio buttons to the right of it with our options that we can select from. And below that, we have our date selector field. We also have a URL field that will allow us to paste hyperlinks on our gauge or calibration records. And then last but not least, we have our counter field. This is going to be an auto increment field. This allows us to auto increment based on a new gauge record or a new calibration record. We could also do things like add a prefix or a suffix to it. That way, if we have multiple locations, we can know which site it's coming from if we export the records. This is a great alternative to the gaugeless ID. Uh, down below, we could choose the display order. We can choose obviously the read only or edit or inactive options. We could also make the field required and we can choose the display section in which this appears, both on the gauge and calibration record. We can also choose to make it visible on our certificate. So if we want new fields or information on our certificates, we can go in here and select yes to add that as well. We could also make it a gauge identifier on a label. And next we have our general settings. Here's where we can go to edit all the different values and gauges that we've been seeing along the way. We can see we have all the different tide values. If you don't need any of those, you can simply delete them all and add new ones. Or if you just want to append to it, just add your new value on a new line. We can do that for all these different options like interval, calibration information, and so forth. You'll also keep in mind that we're going to start to see these update buttons as well on the side here. What that does is it allows us to take an existing value and we can rename it to whatever we want. So that way, if something changes, we can update it and everywhere where that value was, the new value will paste over. So we just enter a new value. And then when we hit replace, it'll replace it everywhere that that was listed. That's really handy too if we have people who leave the company. Say we had a person who was assigned to hundreds or even thousands of gauges, and then somebody else came in and we could simply put their name and their email between square brackets following that same format, and then they would be listed in all the gauges that they were. Down here, we have a bunch of options to select from in our gauges account that we can enable, such as the calibrated by field being editable, being able to highlight overdue records, allowing custom fields, allowing digital signatures, showing the calibration link column in the list view, and showing the attachment column in the list view, enabling calculation assist, enabling pass fail based on as left calculation assist, and the ability to upload an image. Down here is where we'd upload our logo. That logo that appears on the top left, also on our calibration certificate. Here we can choose the file for that. And then below we can customize our calibration certificate state. Next we have our notification settings. Here at the top we can choose the type of notifications that get sent out, whether it be weekly or certain days of the week. We can also choose a monthly option. Here we can choose any variations of days we want for the notifications to be sent out on. We can also choose the report to send. Anything coming due in the next seven days, all the way to 180. And we could also choose to include our overdue gauges. 
Here we have the distribution list. The emails that get entered into this list will receive notifications for every gauge coming due in the system. If we want to add a new email, simply add it on a new line and they will start receiving emails for this site. Below that, we can include our gauge assignees, so people that are assigned to specific tools can receive emails for those specific tools. We have our email subject text, some introduction text, and we also have a separate one that we can send to our assignees as well. Down here, we can choose the information that gets sent in the report. Anything we don't want to be sent, we can drag over from the right to the left, and anything we want to add, we can drag from the left to the right. And we can build out our report just like that. We can go ahead and hit save. Next, we have localization. Up top, we can choose the time zone that we're in, the date display format, the printed PDF size, the preferred export format, and then below that, we can rename fields and make other adjustments to the form. Keep in mind, this option is only available on Starter Plus plans and up. On the left-hand side, we have our gauge field labels. We could rename anything we want to whatever we like. We could also hide a field if it's available with this checkbox and we could also make the field required. Making a field required will make a person enter data into a field so that they cannot be left blank before saving. On the right hand side, we have our calibration field labels and then down at the bottom, we also have our dashboard activity field labels and our test template labels as well. And the last one we have to cover is digital signatures. Keep in mind, this is only available on our business plans and you will have to reach out to GageList initially to have this feature enabled on your account. Here we can allow users to unsign records, allow admins to unsign records, prompt for a pin when signing and unsigning a record, we show the banner on signed records. Here we can customize the messaging for the signed record and also for records that are not signed. Below that we have our signature statement, we have our short codes that will autofill in our signature, date and time, and then we can customize the text surrounding it. For more information on digital signatures, please watch our videos on how to set those up. This has been a settings walkthrough for GageList. If you have any questions about some of the features you've seen here that you'd like to have added to your account, please reach out to us. Thank you.